Development of Credibility-Focused Models The development of credibility-focused models has been transformative for central banks, reshaping inflation-targeting frameworks. This evolution began with the work of Laxton, Ricketts, and Rose, 1993, at the Bank of Canada and was further advanced in subsequent research, including Isard and Laxton, 1998, Laxton and Ndiaye, 2002, Argov et al., 2007, and Alici et al., 2009. These studies highlight the role of credibility in maintaining stable long-term inflation expectations and emphasize the significant economic costs associated with losing and regaining credibility. Central to this research is the recognition that credibility is not static. Inflation premiums embedded in sticky prices and wages are inherently persistent, making delayed policy responses costly both economically and reputationally. While advanced economies benefited from period of relative tranquility during the Great Moderation Period following the 1970s, emerging market economies were not as lucky. Central bank credibility has proven to be helpful for understanding and managing the trade-offs between inflation stabilization and economic slack as credibility evolves. For instance, the Reserve Bank of India RBI, has applied such a framework as described in Chapter 11 of Advancing the Frontiers of Monetary Policy by Almashat, Clinton, Laxton, and Wang, 2018. The RBI employs dual quarterly projection models, QPMs. The first is a linear quarterly projection model, QPM, used for quantitative forecasts that mirror the canonical model in Section 3. The second is an endocred model with non-linearities as described in Section 4. The combination of these models has enhanced the RBI's policy analysis by identifying risks and providing tools to simulate alternate scenarios. This approach has helped the RBI identify potential errors that might arise from reliance on simpler linear models, underscoring the importance of integrating different analytical tools in policy formulation. Similarly, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's RBNZ experience underscores the risks of inadequate modeling frameworks. Before adopting a model-based forecasting and policy analysis framework in 1998, as documented by Drew and Hunt, 1998, the RBNZ relied on rigid approaches to target inflation on a period-by-period -period basis that failed to manage trade-offs effectively. During this period, the approach was likened to trying to brush your teeth through your ear, a method that might achieve the goal but with unnecessary pain and inefficiency. As highlighted by Howarth, Castanian, and Laxton, 2020, the RBNZ relied heavily on the exchange rate channel to manage inflation, imposing significant self-inflicted economic costs. Compounding these issues, the RBNZ lacked an FPAS to guide their inflation targeting efforts. This approach led the RBNZ to tighten monetary policy significantly, resulting in substantial economic slack and a sharp appreciation of the New Zealand dollar. The exchange rate appreciation had devastating effects on the tradable goods sector, particularly on farmers, who bore the brunt of the downturn. Following this experience, the RBNZ transitioned to a more flexible inflation targeting framework, acknowledging the importance of managing inflation and output through a balanced approach that considers both short and medium-term objectives. These lessons remain central to discussions on inflation targeting frameworks globally. The introduction of an FPAS allowed the RBNZ to integrate judgment with model-based forecasts, improving policy coherence and communication. These examples highlight how models serve dual purposes for central banks. First, as thinking devices, they help policymakers conceptualize the economy's dynamics and the evolution of trade-offs under varying levels of credibility. Second, as projection tools, they organize the forecasting process and integrate empirical evidence with judgment. The shift from opaque, ad hoc, judgment-driven approaches to transparent and structured systems like an FPS demonstrates the importance of advanced modeling frameworks in enhancing credibility, anchoring inflation expectations, and managing economic trade-offs more effectively. These innovations reflect the broader trend toward flexible, data-driven inflation-targeting frameworks that balance short-term fluctuations with long-term objectives. While credibility is often lost quickly and regained slowly, there are exceptions. The United Kingdom's experience in May 1997 provides a compelling example. As documented in Managing Expectations by Al Mashat, Clinton, Laxton, and Wang, 2018, the Bank of England gained credibility rapidly after it was granted independence with a clearly defined inflation target. 
Within nine months, long-term inflation expectations, as measured by the spread between nominal and indexed bonds, converge to the new 2.5% target. This outcome underscores the importance of instrument independence, clearly defined goals, and an institutional framework that aligns incentives and reinforces confidence in monetary policy. Finally, the history of the Bank of Israel provides a nice example of the impact of credibility on macroeconomic outcomes. Between 2001 and 2007, the central bank faced two major economic shocks under distinct credibility regimes, first with low credibility and later with high credibility. In late 2001, the dot-com bubble burst, and in the face of a weakening economy, the Bank of Israel cut the policy rate by 200 basis points. This led to a depreciation of the shekel, which generated an upward pressure on prices with headline inflation rising to 7% by July 2002. Only five months later, the Bank of Israel would begin raising rates by 450 basis points, which raised questions about the policy intentions and exacerbated the exchange depreciation via the risk premium when a weaker shekel was already reflecting an economic recession. Inflation continued to rise, and long-run inflation expectations ratcheted upwards to levels above the 3% upper level of the target band. The central bank maintained a tight stance at around 9% until mid-2003, although the economy was struggling to get out of a protracted recession. In hindsight, it may seem that the central bank kept the policy rate too high for too long, and the accompanying exchange rate appreciation pushed inflation into negative territory for an extended period. However, as Figure 1 shows, this was understandable since the Bank of Israel was fighting a high inflation regime with long-run inflation expectations stubbornly above the 1-3% band and arguably needed a period of below-target inflation to anchor inflation expectations. The episode illustrates how low central bank credibility can complicate the management of the economy and result in abrupt changes in the policy rate and contribute to volatile economic activity. The Bank of Israel eventually succeeded in bringing long-run inflation expectations back inside the target band, restoring credibility despite its high costs. Furthermore, the Bank of Israel would later adopt a more forward-looking approach to inflation targeting. This combination would quickly prove to be invaluable for efficiently managing the output inflation trade-off. In 2006, headline inflation overshot the upper band from a one-time pass-through effects of exchange rate depreciation and a steep increase in oil prices along with a fall in spare capacity. In this case, only a modest response from monetary policy was required unlike 2002, 0, 3, and it did not result in an upward ratcheting in long-term inflation expectations. Instead, real interest rates remained broadly stable throughout 2006 while long-run inflation expectations continued their descent toward the midpoint of the target range, figure 2. Once a central bank is successful in establishing credibility as the Bank of Israel did, the benefits from an improvement in the output inflation trade-off under anchored inflation expectations is clear. Therefore, central banks may want to take preemptive action against threats to their credibility to maintain such benefits. After several years of above-target inflation from the pandemic era, Models with endogenous policy credibility can provide the intuition behind a campaign for a monetary policy strategy that is more explicitly focused on anchoring inflation and inflation expectations.